Hi Aquarius, welcome to this reading. Two of Wands. Wow, so maybe there was a massive elephant in the room and what wasn't acknowledged here was the uh, potential to move this forward. It's almost like there could have been an opportunity to discuss a life-changing thing, something that would have changed both of your lives, but it wasn't discussed. Um, if one of you uh, reached out to the other and put an offer on the table, again, huge life-changing offer, very exciting for both of you, but maybe in equal parts scary as well. That wasn't discussed. So for example, maybe you were messaging and you said something to them, offered something huge, um, then you saw them in person, but that wasn't discussed and that was the elephant. Or um, maybe your person was saying, okay, I'm going to relocate to be closer to you or, or leave this job that's in the way of us being together or um, I'm going to leave this relationship that I'm in. And you, you're both thinking, okay, what's going on with that? But that wasn't discussed. Wow, essentially, whatever the specifics of, of the situation, um, both of you, I think, knew there was an opportunity for something, literally to draw a line under something and begin a whole new way of life, but, but it's, it just, yeah, wasn't talked about. But the Page of Swords reversed. And look, in this card, she's holding on to her glasses. Um, I know they're see-through, so if she's watching you, you're going to see her. But again, I think it's talking about this person um, who is observing you, and it feels like such a strong message. As I said, we'll get to that more at the end. Um, yeah, but I, I do get the feeling that what they're doing now is watching, um, and we'll see why. Okay, Page of Swords reverse for me is when we are in fantasy land, and that doesn't even have to be a bad thing. You know, we're visualising, we're daydreaming, but what it does mean to me is we don't have the concrete facts. And how could you if something that seemed like a, a big decision, a big change, wasn't discussed? You know, um, both of you left thinking about this, wondering, imagining, um, projecting into the future. It would be, you know, if we took the leap of faith together, it would look like this. If we didn't, our lives would continue to look like that. Um, so I feel both of you left this conversation or this interaction still thinking about whatever this is um, and really investing in envisioning, daydreaming, imagining, playing out the scenarios of what if we went left versus what if we went right. Yeah, judgment in reverse. Okay, exactly. Reverse though. It, it, both of you were very aware within this discussion, this interaction, we could use this as an opportunity to make a big, big, big decision. And it's not even death, you know, which is big enough, which is an ending of a cycle, beginning of a new one, it's judgment. Um, wow, okay, but it's reversed. We have the chariot, cancer energy there. Um, okay, we have the star reversed, Aquarius, and we have the eight of cups. When I was talking about, do we go left, do we go right? What I was seeing in my head was the, the chariot card actually, but from the, um, everyday witch tarot because in that deck she's in her, on, her mo <clears throat> on her motorcycle excuse me um and she has you know she's got the two what are they called like signposts and i think it says this way and that way that's what i was imagining and we have the chariot here so i know in this depiction this woman she's got these sort of almost strings reaching down to these quite wild looking horses and she's managing almost to be in harmony with them so there are two things going on here first is that I mean, one of the reasons that this potential huge life-changing thing wasn't discussed is because one or both of you felt that there was so much that you already had on your plate and you were only just about managing to keep a balance going, to stay in control of everything, that it would be too much to bring this in as well at this point. The other thing that's happening with the chariot is, um, even though this, this is upright, I get a feeling of maybe feeling overwhelmed, not feeling how we would expect this person in the chariot to feel when it comes out upright, which is that although there's a lot to, to handle here and to navigate, I'm in control and I'm determined and focused. So there's always a bit of a mixed message. I wonder if, again, that emperor reversed I was talking about, I wonder if in speaking with your person, they were coming across as the emperor and you're thinking, what's stopping you? What's stopping you making a decision? What's stopping us having this conversation? But in truth, that is not how they were feeling. They were actually feeling more overwhelmed um, and less in control than they were projecting. We've got the star reverse. Now, come on, we know. I mean, first of all, the chariot follows the star. Then we have the chariot coming out, then the star. That's massively significant. The, the star is reversed. It's, it's like... Although with the two of ones upright, we have a choice. I think intuitively, both of you felt 
that you kind of knew there was really only one choice that was right for both of you in a very subjective sense of, you know, the word right, as in what would make both of you happy. There was clearly a, a more favourable option, and I feel it's the option to take that leap of faith. Um, but that's not what happened because the star is reversed and with the Eight of Cups, it almost feels, I know usually, you know, the Eight of Cups is walking away from something where maybe we've given a lot in the past emotionally, but it's just not doing it for us anymore. I do not feel it with this depiction. I feel we're walking away from those two cups. And look, we don't we don't have any cups here, um, but I, I feel like it's, you know, just with how we've got these cards laid out here and how this message is coming across, there's this interaction, this encounter or this conversation between you. And there's this, this chance here with the star to go for it, to make some massive leap of, of faith and transform both of your lives forever. But it didn't happen because it was left undiscussed. It wasn't said. So now it's like this solo walking away and it just, I don't know, it feels a bit sad. Um, this Eight of Cups, it doesn't feel liberating. It feels like we're walking away from the thing that we want. Um, and I'm looking at her shadow and it's quite long. And as the sun is um, setting, you know, our shadows get longer and, and longer on the ground. So it almost feels like time has passed. I mean, we could say the sun is setting on this opportunity or something like that. I don't think it is, but maybe at the time one or both of you felt that way because you felt your hands were tied. But mostly I'm getting, you know, when you last saw each other, or, or spoke it's not the first time you were, were both thinking about this this is it almost maybe felt like a climactic moment you know after everything we've been through after this journey we've been on are we going to finally make this call together are we going to make a judgment on this um so it feels like you know your last interaction here has happened after some time of knowing this person maybe having you know lots of, of experiences with them maybe trying to discuss this with them before okay what else on the floor we've got the five of pentacles it's back but it's reversed yeah it still feels very unfinished it feels like there's distance um between you missing each other whether that's because there's absolutely no communication or contact um you're not seeing each other or it's because you see each other, maybe you see each other every day or a few times a week and you're speaking, but you don't get a chance to speak about the deep and meaningful things. Okay, let's take both of these. We've got the King of Cups <clears throat> and the Age of Pentacles reverse. So this is why there's still this holding on and it feels unfinished because um, for both of you, it's it's like, you know, that inner voice that wants us to follow the star and to align with what feels best, no matter how it changes our practical realm, that's still calling out. You are still calling out for each other um, in the heart space. And, you know, I know it's, it sounds cheesy and corny. <laughs> I kind of resent having to say it, to be honest. I kind of want to go, Bleh. but um, honestly, that's what's happening. I, I do feel like, you know, you're... you're um, in the in the heart space the heart chakra you are very much connected and calling out for each other and look we've even got it here and i know that's not her heart of course that's more the solar plexus um so again it's like you know if we think of the solar plexus as the seat the place of our truth our personal power um you know you know both of you know which path you want to take what's going to feel best what's most in alignment with you but with the eight of coins reversed i'm not seeing the tangible time and effort being put into this for whatever reason um of course if one person is not being present there's only so much the other can do um and the person who's not being present might feel like well my hands are tied because of work or family or blah 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 you know but regardless eight of coins reversed for this to move forward we need to be showing up every day we need to be doing the small things as well as the big things and that's not happening right now however we have the eight of pentacles that has shown up which tells me it's on very much on both of your minds that you are wanting to come towards this um to come towards each other yes but come back to this point of this opportunity being on the table and knowing it's there and knowing you have the, the option to discuss it and to put work into it so neither of you have let this go whatever this this two of ones is it could be as i said let's leave our current relationships with other people to be together let's both um relocate to move in and, and be close together especially if you're very far away from each other maybe even in different countries or something um let's 
oh, I don't know, <laughs> you know, I'm, I could go through a million things here, but you get the idea, whatever it is, let's take that leap of faith, let's go for it. Both of you are still thinking about this. Um, whether this last interaction happened yesterday, last week, or five, ten years ago, you know? Right, okay, so that feels very clear. I don't think I'm going to need the second deck I pulled out to clarify anything. Let's go into the messages, and then we'll finish up with what is going on with this person now. What are they doing? Well, I'll get to that. I was going to start explaining again, but, you know, <laughs> just do it when we get there. Okay, let's see. <clears throat> what was left unsaid, please? something about a business I don't know if um, just for a few of you maybe you spoke with this person you know um, and you you had a plan to start a business together or something and um, maybe they were too afraid to leave their current you know situation around employment um, okay <clears throat> Have you moved on with someone else who treats you better than I did? That thought is so painful. Yeah, and I mean, maybe that's why they're looking so hard to try and find out. Um, <clears throat> I am angry with you, but really I am angry at myself. So that could be that distorted masculine energy. You know, as I said, it could be society telling this person, as it tells all of us, you know, if you're in, in a masculine energy, specifically if you're a man, you, you know, if you're, well, you, you can express only very limited emotions without being judged, and anger is one of them, you know? So they could have oftentimes perhaps been that reverse emperor and got triggered or angry or something, but really maybe it was fear that they were feeling. And as well, it can, it can be dependent upon a person's fight or flight response. You know, they're, what are they there now? I think fight, flight, freeze and fawn. Um, if this is a fight person, then you know they, they might often get triggered and seem angry even when actually that's not the, the main emotion um right okay let's take these two and this one on the top and put those back so this says you are not the only one <laughs> see you are not the only one that's scared the connection scares me too so i think for many of you this, this person has seemed your person has seemed angry or unapproachable or cold or just annoyed triggered in some way um, and maybe even projected and almost attacked you in some way, you know, whether it's been energet energetically, verbally, um, done something to try and trigger you. But actually it's come from a place of them being scared. And, um, you know, that's definitely not me saying, oh, well, that's an excuse, it's fine then, or anything like that, um, because I don't know what they did in response to this. But um, yeah, just to say that's, that's something they were feeling. Um, you make me so nervous, sometimes it's hard to breathe. Yeah, I do think they were, they at times have been faking confidence here. I feared you were more obsessed with me than, rather than in love. It felt suffocating sometimes. Okay, so maybe they were keeping it, you know, playing it cool, keeping a distance, trying to wait and see, is your interest in them going to fade away? And they did that for so long, you, you sort of had to move on or it's created distance. And now they're wondering, OK, maybe you're with someone who actually reciprocates and they kind of want you to know, but never said. Part of the reason I held back was because I couldn't believe that you would be so interested in me. So I was trying to self-preserve, self-protect um, so that when I thought, you know, when your interest in me naturally declined, which I believe genuine, genuinely would happen, I wouldn't be super emotionally invested. But now I understand you actually really truly cared it wasn't just an obsession um but i know my behavior came off as cold anyway maybe no one um and i feel really I feel bad saying this but what i'm feeling is that maybe no one's ever been that interested in this person or at least as interested as you were so um i don't know if they're used to chasing after people trying to get people's attention feeling like they're not good enough um or just being sort of passed over or something but you were really interested you really tried to pursue and let them know and that was unfamiliar to them so they and they didn't feel worthy of it or couldn't quite see what you could see sort of thing you know um Hmm. Okay, let's see. I'm hearing something about classically handsome. So 
gosh, if you're asking specifically, I suppose, about a man, they might not think that they are classically handsome. And obviously that varies um, completely depending on where you are in the world and what your culture says is attractive and all of that. Now I'm feeling some of you saying that you don't want classically handsome. That's a bit, that's like, um, what, what's it called? A backhanded compliment in a way, isn't it? If you say, I mean, I'm not saying you did say it or would say it, but if you say that to someone, <laughs> it's almost a, <laughs> well, I don't need to, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> I don't know I'm finding that so funny. Okay, what was left unsaid? Is there anything else from this deck, please? Um, I need to control this connection. I'm afraid I will lose myself in you. And that's making me think of, you know, what I was saying about the chariot. She looks very much in control, but I think underneath that's not how this person um, has been feeling or felt the last time you interacted. Uh, I try to walk away from you, but something keeps pulling me back to you. Exactly. And that's exactly on top of that five of pentacles reversed. As I was saying, you know, there's a feeling of... Um, your heart's wanting to pull you back together and we've got that message about the solar plexus um not wanting this separation you check all my boxes how can that be possible um well yeah there we go exactly not believing that a they could trust this that b you were real and see that if you are real someone like you would even be interested in someone like them never mind so interested what's you know interesting here is that this deck when when it was created um the blue was intended to represent divine feminine energy and the red divine masculine um we only have one blue card here. Again, I know I keep going on, but something about that reversed Emperor card, me seeing the Emperor in my mind's eye with this deck, there's something about how your person processes their feminine and masculine energy, how they project that into the world. Um, and, and specifically within the framework of the question we're asking, what was left unsaid, there's something about they have a filter. Um, if the inherently, I guess, what we might class socially as a feminine feeling comes up, you know, whatever that is, um, they won't express it in, in its authentic state. They will filter it through this, whatever the lens of masculinity they have, or, you know, whatever they think is appropriate to express it in a masculine sense, and then they'll show it to you in that way. And sometimes it's very, very different from the original feeling. For example, fear turns into being angry with you and you're thinking, why are you angry? What are you angry about? Whereas actually they were afraid. Um, and of course, this can be if you are asking about a man or a woman, you know, um, it's just your person's own personal definitions and relationship to their feminine energy and their masculine energy. Um, yeah, okay, so let's get one more messages deck and then we'll go into the, the final tarot deck. Oh, I'm sorry I couldn't follow through with my promises. Wow. Yeah, so for some of you, your last interaction with this person, you were wanting to mention the elephant in the room because maybe you had naturally thought or assumed, okay, something's going to, you know, we're going to have a chance to talk about this. Um, they said something, they promised me something, they said something really big, potentially life-changing. So now naturally we're going to discuss this more and it got pushed down. Um, maybe it's very painful. Maybe in that moment you realise, okay, they're obviously needing to back down on this promise. Okay. I'm trying to think of what I want to say to you. Even though I don't show it, I'm sorry for how things went between us. Yeah, so for some of you there was an apology or an explanation needed the last time you spoke. I'm finally feeling the consequences of my actions. You know what I feel from that? It's like even in the moment they understood I'm making the wrong choice, even in not speaking about this or not saying certain things to you, I know I'm making the wrong choice and I'm going to regret this. I'm already regretting it in this moment. It just feels bad. Um, our connection still affects me. Yeah, for sure. Okay, let's see. I'm trying to take responsibility for my actions right now. Please know this. And I think that's towards you because that's coming out underneath, even though I don't show it, I'm sorry for how things went between us. I Wow, I don't know if I can meet your expectations. And then look, that's on top of this card. 
you check all of my boxes. Yeah, you are out of my league, you're too good for me, you're going to be bored of me, or blah, 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 you know? Definitely a lot of fear. Um, it all comes down to timing. So they've been waiting. This is, this is them still waiting, wanting to say something to you. Okay, now I feel particularly excited about this part because this was pushed into the reading. So I feel like there's a really big reason why. So let's see. Oh my God, look at this. I've just split the deck. Strength reversed with the Emperor. So everything I was saying about this person being in this sort of almost false sense of confidence. Um, we've got Leo energy, we've got Aries energy. There's a big ego here, but again, the big ego is masking their feeling of fragility. Um, oh my God, look what slipped out. The two of matches, which is the two of ones in this deck. Are you kidding me? Yeah, this is exciting. Okay, let's see. Which of course I'm excited about because we started with that card. And this is them thinking about that choice they, they had and, and think, feeling like they made the wrong choice. We've got strength reversed again with the two of cups reversed. So as I was saying, that eight of cups, it feels like they walked away from this two of cups opportunity. Right, okay, let's see. Let's see what actually comes out. So, Spirit, then, what is happening now? My viewers' person, what are they doing now? I almost want to say, almost not fully, what action are they taking? So I do think this is very focused on their day-to-day -day 3D life. If you're wondering, outside of, of sort of their mind and... Um, the, the sort of energetic side of this connection in their, their heart space, what are they actually doing, maybe specifically in relation to you in this connection on a daily basis? Are they looking at your social media? If they live close, are they driving by? Are they talking to people about you? You know, that sort of thing. Are they actually making any tangible plans, whether it's directly towards you or making plans to change up a situation that's keeping them from this connection? We have the Five of Cups reversed. Okay, so this is someone who has pulled themselves out of the, um, like, a morose, sad, woe is me kind of mood. And they're saying, okay, I'm focused now on what is you know, right for me, those two cups. And they still believe that there is a possibility to bring this together. We have a magician, look at this. So they are doing things, they are being powerful, they are in their power and they know they can influence and, and make change happen. And that's what they're doing. We've got Gemini here, this could also be talking about them learning something, looking into something, communicating something. Um, okay, let's keep going. Oh my gosh, two of wands now reversed. For me, reversed, I've made a decision. That decision is I'm stepping into the new, what's in alignment with me. I'm scared, but I'm doing it. Okay, I'm, wow. No wonder Spirit was like, you need to ask this as well, because this is someone who's initiating change. This is someone who's putting in the practical work, and I'll see specifically what in a minute, um, to find a way to, to bring this offer back, to put it back on the table, and this time to not leave anything unsaid, to put in that Eight of Pentacles. So they're making changes in their practical realm. I'm really focusing on the two cats. Um, I don't know if I just feel particularly connected because it's making me think of my two cats or um, if there's a, a reason beyond that. Um, why would we have two cats in the Magician card? I mean, I guess the cats could be representing intuition. Why have we got two? Both of your higher selves working together, perhaps? Um, I don't know. Yeah, maybe that has a special meaning for you. Okay, what else? What is this person doing, please? My viewer's person, what are they doing? Okay, I feel that's it, so let's go in and clarify. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, Queen of Swords. Seven of Wands. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. So they're putting up boundaries. Okay. What are they doing? What's happening now? What are they doing? Temperance reversed, Sagittarius. They're rocking the boat. We've got the King of Wands on the back. And with this sort of cape, there's something here that's making me look at this King of Wands, you know, like he's a bit heroic, like if we were watching a superhero film, you know, and he's come to save the day. Um, so this person, they feel proud of themselves. They feel like they're stepping up and they're making the difficult decisions. So this boundary setting, Let's say one of the things that, um, let me give a few examples. Um, in the past, your person was saying, we can't move this forward because my, my family won't approve. They're setting up boundaries with their family, you know? Um, and if someone's like, well, you shouldn't, you shouldn't, you know, say something or do something towards you, the viewer, your person's saying, 
you know, thanks for your feedback, thanks for your concern, I'm doing it anyway. If it's work, um, let's say they were, they were overworking and they felt they couldn't ever take time off or something and it was problematic, they're saying, okay, when it gets to whatever time I set, I'm not going to be available for you know, for work. I'm going to turn off my phone or my work phone or my not check my emails or whatever it is. Um, <clears throat> I don't know what, I mean, obviously it'll be different, but let's clarify, but they're pushing up some kind of boundary and it feels like it's not natural for them. I don't know if your person has had a bit of like, um, if they've been inclined towards people pleasing or something and they're not doing that now. Um, and it's really, really genuinely transforming the way that they live and their levels of confidence. It's almost a feeling of, I deserve to live how I want to live. I deserve to be happy. I, I'm not, I, I don't exist on this planet simply to bend over backwards and make everybody else happy and for everyone else feel comfortable. Um, okay, let's see. Yeah, see, Seven of Swords reversed. I deserve to live my authentic truth. I think if in the past they had a boundary up with you, it's because you were tapping into a part of them that was very authentic, but they ignored it or reduced it or felt that society would reject them for it. And now it's flipped. The boundary is with society. The openness is towards you. Um, okay. Thinking about the magician, transmutation. Hmm. There's something about these cats. What's going on with these cats, please? Like, they feel really important, and the way he's holding them up, they're quite central. Ten of Swords. Yeah, an ending. An ending to something painful. And look, she's sleeping. She doesn't even know she's about to get cut by all these, um, you know, razors up here. Um, I was nervous what to call them there, because honestly, I don't know with YouTube these days if, if they'll flag something. I've, yeah, anyway. <sighs> We can see what they are. She's ner she does well, she doesn't know that they're about to fall. Um, it feels like some kind of betrayal being taken advantage of. It wasn't a fair fight. So yeah, I don't know if if your person's used to pleasing everyone and no one really caring about them, people taking advantage of them, being stabbed in the back by people they trusted, but there's a transmutation of this difficult energy and using it now to empower them. Before they used it to hide themselves, to, to make themselves smaller, to protect themselves. Now they're, they're using it to say, okay, I'm going to be the best, fullest version of myself. Um, because let's say we feel we've always been attacked in one way or another. There are two ways to go about it. We hide in our houses so no one can see us, no one knows we exist, therefore they're not going to attack us, which I think metaphorically is what your person has been doing. Or we say, I'll use this to make myself stronger. Um, and every time something like this happens, I'll understand how to react in a better way. I'm developing skills, resources, maybe practically I know who to speak to about this. Um, I'm going to go out into the world, you know, armed with all of these experiences and, and this knowledge. And that's what they're doing now. Um, okay, let's see. Okay, well, that's too many. Hierophant reversed, yeah. So we've got Taurus here, but this feels like an actual, whatever this is, you know, we have that two of ones upright. And I was saying that I feel what wasn't discussed was this opportunity to bring something to an end completely and, and begin a new life together or, you know, begin new lives um, within the situation. And we had that judgment card reversed. So this is someone, as I said, you know, your person hasn't given up. They don't feel like there's no chance whatsoever. Maybe you do, I don't know, but they don't. Um, so whatever this hierophant represents, marriages, institutions, home, education, work, religion, whatever it is, that's the thing they are, it looks to me, stepping away from here. And with temperance in reverse, yeah, it's really going to rock the boat. It's going to cause upset, but they don't care because now they are feeling stronger. Seven of Wands and the Magician. The Hierophant can also represent things that are so um, established that we just accept them as being the way we do things. They're traditional. So something about your relationship. Wow. Relationship. Okay. Or connection here. Maybe that's where this is heading if, if you're not in a relationship. Um, might be untraditional in your person's eyes or the culture around you of people, the, the mindset of people around you. Um, in, in whichever way, I don't know if it's sexuality, age, 
um, how you go about the relationship. Maybe you never want to get married or live together or, or you know, whatever it is. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's just see what's going on with this Queen of Swords. I don't know if this is them gearing up to talk to you, if this is how they're perceiving you. Let's see. Queen of Cups reverse. Yeah, I think this is how they're perceiving you. Whether you are, you know, you resonate as being a, a queen or a king, it's this feeling of you were very giving, nurturing in the past. Lots of this divine feminine energy, um, wanting to grow, sustain, give of yourself to this connection. Um, but you've, you've, you know, had to pull back. You've gone from the Queen of Cups um, upright to reverse. So you're, you're mostly maybe caring for yourself self nurture that sort of thing and maybe you've had to put some boundaries up or you've become a bit more cold with this person with the queen of swords upright it doesn't mean you are actually cold you might be but for some of you it could just be that through the act of not being as warm as giving as um proactive maybe it seems like there's more of a coolness about you now okay well, like I said, they still believe, Five of Pops Reverse, that you are as connected to them as they are to you and that they have a chance here if they put enough work in to bring this moment back around and this time they will say the things that were left unsaid. So you may hear, if you haven't already, about changes this person's making in the practical realm. They've moved house, they've, they've changed job or, you know... <clears throat> You might even hear, for a few of you, you might even hear people gossiping negatively about your person and they might be saying things like, oh, so-and-so's changed, they used to help me with this and now they're saying no. That's actually a good thing for this person. They were never saying yes to everyone because they enjoyed it and they felt taken advantage of, you know? So even if you hear people talking negatively about them, saying they're becoming more unhelpful or more closed off, um, or maybe, you know, they seem more arrogant or something, it's actually they're not arrogant they're just they're just self-preserving they're just honoring themselves you know so even that's a good thing okay so i will leave this here but thank you for watching i hope it resonated i hope there were some messages for you if you're watching this when it's published i hope you have a lovely weekend and i will see you soon bye